Okay, we're working on our lovely Dingo TX-1000. Um, as we can see, the motor in the back stopped working. Um, some testing that you can do to test out if the motor is bad or the pump is bad. Um, we uh, went over here in the front. Can't really see it now, I guess. You can see the pumps down there. And we took off the hoses on on the pump going to the rear and put some caps on there they're called flat face fittings so they're flat face fittings but anyway we capped off the the pump up there and um so we were not using the motor anymore and when we tried to go with forwards and backwards on the right side the engine would bog down proving that the motor pump uh, for the hydraulics is working fine so we we uh we're trying to get this uh motor out of this hole here we had to loosen the hydraulic hoses on the back we eventually got up here and we had to take off the uh, uh the hookup nipples on the uh the motor um and uh, now that I think about it, maybe we didn't necessarily have to do that, but we did anyway. Um, and then here's the wheel. We couldn't get the, uh, the wheel off the motor, so we left that on there. We popped out the bolts on the front side. And um, in the back side, there's some uh, brackets that the bolts screw into. So two brackets there. <clears throat> um, when we took this apart, we noticed that uh, between the A and the B, we noticed around the edge um, on the inside, uh, there's a little uh, edge that is next to a hole that broke away. So in essence, the fluid would come in A and B and bypass right to each other, and the motor would not spin. So. Um, Looks like we got to just replace this top piece here. So we're going to look for a part number there. Um, what else were we doing over here? Here, Here's the uh, back plates where the bolts hold on the motor. Um, over here, we had to take this bolt out right there. That was holding the brake assembly on. And then on the back side, we had to take this brake activator off. And um, and then we also took this bolt out to try to get a little clearance, but I'm not sure if we really needed to do that. And then over here, this is the, uh, the brake piece with the tensioner. That whole thing just popped out, you know, once we took, up, took out enough bolts. Um, here, this flat piece right here, this is where the motor should have just pulled right out through the front. Um, it didn't have enough clear clearance here, uh, so we'll probably grind that down a little bit um, once we uh, fix the motor. So when we put this thing back together, uh, we'll probably put this piece on first and then slide the motor in here and let it slide in and then we can bolt on the four bolts to the back plate. Um, so anyway, that's a uh, work in progress um, on this repair. And um, once you know what you're doing, I would say it's somewhat of a difficult job, but um, if you mark everything down on what you're taking apart, um, you should be able to get it back together. And then also, when you uh, have your motor, make sure you're putting a variety of marks on there. So when you reassemble the stack back together, you, you've got it uh, perfectly matched up. Um, in our case, if we took off this top piece and looked at it and found out you know, that that's a broken piece up there, we wouldn't have to take any of that apart. But we explored all these other pieces just to make sure that uh, there is no other broken pieces in there. So um, that's what's going on with this motor repair. And this is the uh, Parker 
motor. Part number is 138-0778 and that's for the right side of the uh, machine. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.